May 4th, 2020. Okay? That's not how it works. I'm telling you to move. Okay? Don't no. touch me, dude. Sima. Sima. Woo! Oh my god. Oh my god. I have. Oh my god. That incident is one of the worst police deputy interactions I have ever seen. It has stayed with me, and I have tried to get more information, and now I still don't have any information, but the situation has evolved to this. I was contacted by LASD Internal Affairs Bureau. They asked me if I would come in for an interview regarding my video titled The Vile Deputies of Lennox. I went back and forth with the sergeant for like a month. At first I had agreed, then was like, wait, what protections are you offering so I am not retaliated against? She replied, you are entitled to provide a statement regarding the force incident. I cannot offer protection. This interview is voluntary. I understand your concern. <laughs> uh, we went back and forth for another week, and my curiosity finally got the better of me, and I agreed. I say my curiosity because I am really interested in finding out this process, IA questioning a member of the public. She had requested the video file, the raw video file from my posted video. I sent her a raw-ish file with no music or extras, but still not the full video file. I didn't have my dash cam yet back then and was recording from my camera and it was mounted on my dash. I recorded without stopping that night for around an hour and a half of continued recording, which became four video files on my SD. I gave her most of the raw video from what you see in the video I posted, but the video I posted was like 15 minutes long. Anyway, this became an issue later. So. Daniel and I went to the interview and interviewed separately. I went first. Sergeant Delgado and her partner, whose name I forget, but was also sergeant, advised me before and again at the interview that I was not allowed to video record or audio record. So I made sure right after we were done to run to my car and write down everything before I forgot. And it went like six. We met the sheriffs at the Commerce Building. They took me to a large conference room. They recorded via digital audio recorder. They asked me my info, name, address, and I started to tell them, but then I kind of hesitated. I asked if my info will be available to the public. They said no, none of this will be public record because it is an internal investigation, but if the complaint is deemed founded, all the information in the file will be available to the deputies for review. I was like, oh, well that's worse. Anyway, yeah, I was done giving my info. So we moved on. Then the issue with the video file came up. She was trying to match a timeline to my posted video or even to the video I sent her with what I was saying, but it wasn't going to work that way. I explained that I never stopped recording, so I had an hour and a half of continuous video, but the SD configured the final file into four files. She asked if she could have the four files. I said no. We had conversations and said things about the situation, heat of the moment shit, and other conversations that I do not want to be available to whatever deputy in the future if the complaint is founded. She was kind of frustrated, but we again moved on. Then there was a lot of where were you in proximity to this, that, and the other. How far from them would you say you were standing? Could you see everything clearly as it happened? Could you hear what the deputies were saying to each other? I started to feel like they were second guessing me or trying to get me to say something that didn't match some other account. But I wasn't there giving them an alibi. And I began questioning what the reason for some of the questions were, and why they kept asking those questions over and over, just wording it differently. They said they would explain after the official interview part since they couldn't stop the audio recording at that point. I was referring to the, most of the deputies I recognized by their name as I explained things. They stopped me at one point after I mentioned Deputy Kano and Deputy Parga. They stopped to ask me how I know... They were the deputies who pulled the man over. I was like, well, Deputy Parga was photographed shortly after we arrived. Then, not too long after that, we saw Deputy Kano with blood all over him. Doesn't take a genius or detective <laughs> to figure it out. And not too long after that, the official interview was over and they stopped recording. Then they tried to explain their manner of questioning was because they wanted to know the truth. That's all. They want to collect as much information to be able to turn it into the oversight committee. They said it with such confidence. I replied, yeah, the truth for the oversight committee. They said yes and asked, are you familiar with their role in accountability? I told them, yeah, I'm aware. They tried to go on and explain a fairy tale about how the oversight committee works to address issues with the department for the city. Blah, 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 blah. I stopped her. 
I was like, yeah, the same oversight who was publicly fighting with the sheriff, Alex Villanueva, the same oversight who can't tell us anything about complaints or the recommendations or punishments, but we're just supposed to take their word for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one? Yeah, okay. They tried to blow some more sunshine up my ass, but I stood up and asked if they needed anything else. They said no, and then we were done. Then Daniel went up, but his meeting was a lot shorter, and we left. It was maybe an hour after leaving there that I noticed an email from Sergeant Delgado asking if I could call her. She had one more question, so I called her, and she said she forgot to ask me about the part of the video when I am heard saying, don't touch me. I was sure the interview was a waste of time until she asked me about that part. She asked me everything from which hand he used and which of my arms did he grab. Still might have been a waste of time, but I don't regret it. I wanted to know, and now I know what the process is like. I'm not saying if any of you are asked to do an interview with IA that you should or should not. You need to consider your own personal well-being to make that decision. What I witnessed was very real, and it reminded me this is why cop watchers do what we do for accountability and to document and share with the public what is really going on with law enforcement. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, have a good one guys. Be safe.